welcome to part one of who I am, what I do, why I do what I do. My name is Dr. Ilya Skolnikov. In the next part, I mentioned that I'm a diplomate of the International Board of Applied Kinesiology. And in that section, I explain that a diplomate of the International Board of Applied Kinesiology is somebody who's a specialist at diagnosing the underlying causes of people's health concerns. There's always three causes of every health concern, period. End of story. No, it's not a up for negotiation. It's not my opinion. It's not somebody who uh, has some interesting things to say and just wanted to try and get a bunch of people to agree with them because uh, they were bored. Absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt, every health concern has a structural component, meaning there's a physical aspect to the health concern. Every health concern has an emotional component because there's an emotional aspect to the health concern. And every health concern has a chemical or nutritional or toxic or biochemical component because there's a chemical health concern to every health concern, okay? So what happened with me is I grew up in a family where academics and education were incredibly important. I'm Jewish, first of all. So with the Jewish background, uh, we really like to stress education in our culture and learning and academics and, you know, grades are important for, for many of the people of my background. And so that was the case in my family. My father's a medical doctor, he's a psychiatrist, and my mother's an anthropologist. So early on, science was, was big in my family. I actually worked at a little science museum in San Francisco called the Exploratorium when I was growing up. I, I worked there for a little while. And I would explain the exhibits to people, the science exhibits, who would come in and frequent the Exploratorium. So, what happened was I started getting really severe acne when I was in my, um, in my late and mid-teens. It was, it was pretty bad. I ended up getting an acne medication that was over the counter. You can, anyone can get it, you know, benzoyl peroxide, and I would apply that to my skin, and I would, I would see in the mirror that the acne went away, and then a couple days later, it would sort of come back, and then I'd put it on again, and it would go away, and a couple days later, it would come back, and after doing that just for a really short time, less than a month or two, every time I put it on, it just got worse. It would just come, come back underneath the benzoyl peroxide worse than before I ever started using the benzoyl peroxide. So nobody told me benzoyl peroxide was toxic. How would I know what, that, that it was toxic? I mean, what, I was like, you know, 16 or 15 or something like that. What would I know about things that are toxic versus things that are not? And why would I care? I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't care. I was 15, okay? So I ended up trying this other thing because, you know, I wanted the acne to go away. I mean, I was starting to become attracted to women, as you can imagine, a uh, male teen at about 15 or so. And so uh, they weren't women, they were little girls, I guess. But, you know, still, <laughs> I, was, I was already interested in finding out about this. And having more than two eyes on my face was not the way to go about the process of, you know, meeting people of the opposite sex. So I... Um, I ended up trying this thing called Cleosinte. It's a, a prescription medication that you get from a dermatologist. And that worked better than the benzoyl peroxide. I was happier with that. The only thing was is that, again, after just a month or two, it stopped working. So that wasn't any good. Then I tried another one called Retin-A. Nobody ever told me all these things were toxic, by the way. For all I knew, they were like God's gift from, you. you know, they were utopian chemicals that came from deep in the lakes, hidden up in the top of the Himalayas. I mean, I had no idea what the heck this stuff was, okay? So I was using the benzoyl peroxide. I used the Cleosin T. I used the Retin-A. Finally, we were started running out of things for me to use. Um, there was even a um, tetracycline product that I would use, a pill that I would swallow. And that stuff worked kind of like the other ones, not too good, not too bad, not too good, not, not, not really working. I mean, I was having the more than two eyes, right? I had craters in my face. I know my face looks good now because finally I used Accutane, okay? And Accutane was amazing. Let me tell you a little bit about Accutane though, and there is some sarcasm here if you don't mind. I'm gonna to try to keep it to a minimum because it's a little inappropriate for healthcare providers to be sarcastic, but anyway, it's too late. So when I used the Accutane, um, 
there's a few things that happened. I had to go into the dermatologist in person, meet him, shake his hand. I think we did a lab. He did an exam, and they determined that I was a, an appropriate candidate for Accutane. So I was prescribed the Accutane, not to be given to women unless they were first um, given a pregnancy test. So interesting to know. Not to be given to people who have known liver toxicity. Interesting. It said on the instructions that when using this product, stay out of direct sunlight because it may, you know, cause damage to the skin and whatnot if you're in direct sunlight. It's actually a really powerful synthetic vitamin A product is what retin A is. And it causes the liver to stop producing oils properly, which kind of is a concern, uh, or not producing oils, but breaking down oils properly. So it's seriously interfering with bile production, bile metabolism, bilirubin, the liver's function. I mean, this is not, this is not some mild product that you just start using. Um, it said that I might see floaters in my eyes when using the product. I should get real flushed skin um, and have dry skin that starts to flake with a lot of red redness right after using the product. And sure enough, all that was all true. I started seeing floaters in my eyes. You know, when I looked in certain directions, you'd see things floating, kind of like these dark circles or light circles. Um, I, I had the flushing of the skin. I had really dry skin. So something, something about that product is just not quite right, if you know what I'm saying. This is not, this is not a, a, a product that's non-toxic. Um, at the time, I didn't know that the main e emotion of the liver is anger, irrationality, frustration, aggression, uh, depressed, to some extent, indecisive, feeling upset, annoyed, and, you know, uh, these types of emotions. So uh, I, I used the product as prescribed, and it worked really well. I mean, it had all the side effects of that I didn't know at that time were actually the effects of the medication. When it says on a medication label that these are the side effects of the medication, that's not true. Those aren't side effects. Those are the effects of the medication. So for example, example um, Prozac, one of, the, one of the side effects is possibly wanting to commit suicide. That's not a side effect. People commit suicide to use Prozac. It happens all the time. They knew before they put it out on the market that a certain percentage of people would commit suicide. That's documented, that's proven, that's known. Read Talking Back to Prozac by Dr. Peter Bragan, the psychiatrist. It was known that the product I took had certain effects, and the effects were to cre create liver toxicity. All of a sudden, within a couple years, I started having symptoms of, guess what? Liver toxicity. I started having hot flashes. Well, they weren't hot. They were, uh, better, better be honest here, they were like warm flashes, okay? At night, I would get night sweats. No joke. I was sweating, like, a lot at night. The girl I was seeing at the time, this was now I was in my, in my um, 20s, or even in my mid or late tw later 20s, um, she was just kind of wondering, you know, what's going on with this guy? You know, he's like sweating at night, you know? <laughs> Maybe I should find somebody else <laughs> as a boyfriend pr prospect, you know? <laughs> Okay, and then um, I was also having trouble with libido. Uh, actually, I had, a, I had a pretty strong urge, but not a lot of, you know, things didn't, you understand what I'm saying? They didn't, some erectile dysfunction is what I'm getting at. And I was young, right, real young. Um, I started getting angry all the time. I was yelling at family members. I was yelling at the girl I was seeing. I just get angry. People would annoy me. I just figured people were annoying. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me. I just figured that these people deserve to be yelled at, you know? But the truth was is that I was having symptoms of liver toxicity. Then guess what? And either this part or in the next part when you find out about the relationship between um, muscles and nutrients, muscles and bones, muscles and acupuncture meridians, joints, homeopathic remedies, colors, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet, sound, notes of a scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven notes of a scale, seven primary colors. There's all these different relationships, okay? And there's relationships between the acupuncture meridians and different muscles. So for me, I tore a muscle called the pec major sternal on the left um, when I was starting to uh, study my prerequisites for chiropractic school. 
I was actually lifting weights and I tore 90% of that muscle. I found a great surgeon and they repaired it and I was really lucky. Um, it seems to work really well now and I'm able to do the work that I do as a chiropractor, adjusting patients and whatnot. But then, a few years later, when I was in chiropractic school, I was doing a chiropractic adjustment. Whew, you know where I was. So somebody was lying on their side and I did an adjustment. A big guy who weighed uh, almost a little less than 300 pounds. He weighed about, um, anyway, he weighed a lot. I tore the same muscle on the opposite side of my body. I had already started studying applied kinesiology a little bit and I was trying to understand, you know, what, what's going on? Why am I tearing the same muscle. I've never torn a muscle before in my life. And then all of a sudden I'm tearing the pec major sternal on one side. A few years later I tear the pec major sternal on the other side. I was toxic. I was sick. I had a toxic liver. A lot of people who have hormonal imbalances have a toxic liver. 60% of thyroid hormone is converted from T4, inactive thyroid hormone, to T3, which is active thyroid hormone in the liver. If you're suffering from thyroid disease or if you're suffering from symptoms of liver toxicity, Many of these symptoms are the same. A lot of female hormonal imbalances are none other than um, caused by toxicity of some sort. That was me. I was having pain between my shoulder blades. I was having to take a handful of pills to go to sleep at night, a handful of pills to wake up in the morning. I was having headaches. I was getting depressed. I was having all these symptoms of somebody who's really toxic. I was toxic. I was yelling at people. I mean, it was just not a good, everything was doom and gloom. I was always looking at the negative in things. Because when you're sick and you're toxic, things just kind of seem not right. It seems like everything is working out for the worse, not for the better. Because that's what toxic people do. It's not, it's not that they're, they're not good people. I mean, I'm a great person. I'm a good, good fella, good doctor, good, good human being. But you just can't, it's just hard to be optimistic when you're toxic and you're sick, and, and, and you're filled with chemicals that are poisonous. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think it makes sense the way I explained it pretty well. Okay. So I would do anything to start feeling better. At the time, I was having trouble sleeping at night. I was, I was having aches and pains everywhere. I was having the pain between my shoulder blades. I was having the irritable bowel syndrome. I was having what they call, um, nowadays they have all these fancy words for it, like gut and psychology syndrome metabolic syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, okay, they have all these catchphrases and they're all, re you know, they're, they're real enough, but the point is, is what is causing these things? Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine said, the highest good is to find the cause. And what he meant by that is the highest good is to find the cause of the health concern. There's always going to be these three causes of any health concern, but normally you'd have to go to a chiropractor and an acupuncturist who inserts needles and they look at the herbs and, and that kind of thing. And you'd have to go to a marriage and family therapist to get your, or a psychologist or somebody like that to help with emotions. You're gonna have to go to a medical doctor to do a, a surgery if that's the, the thing that's needed. You have to go to a, a medical doctor to get your medication, prescription medication. You have to go to all these healthcare providers to, 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 to get help in all these different areas. But wouldn't it make more sense if you could just go to one person who does all these things? Wouldn't that make more sense? Wouldn't that be more logical? Wouldn't that be less expensive? Wouldn't that take less time and less energy? Wouldn't that be something you'd want to find out more about? These questions are not annoying, are they? They're, 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 they're thought provoking. They really make you sit and think, well, wait a second, if I could go to the guy who combined all these things into one, and they had a homeopathic pharmacy in their office. They had a nutritional pharmacy. They had a herbal pharmacy. They had the therapies needed. Yeah, so I'm having to watch this video for 15 minutes, you think to yourself. I'm sitting here watching this thing for 15 minutes. But you know what, if this 15 minute video can change every aspect of your life, and I'm not telling you it can, I'm just getting you to think a little bit, but what if it could? What if the thing that you're watching right now could make the difference in every area of your life, like it has for so many hundreds of my other patients. And if it could, then it's worth it to consider how much money you could save not having to go to a nutritionist and an acupuncturist and a homeopath and a naturopath and a herbologist and a, and a chiropractor and an acupuncturist and a physiatrist and the medical doctor. If somebody can do all those things and maybe just every now and then refer out to somebody who else is needed, 
like an acupuncturist, not an acupuncturist, actually, well, maybe, but since I'm doing the acupuncture and I studied acupuncture in school for over two years, why not just get referred out to a colon hydrotherapist if you need one for, for some reason? Or if you need to get a prescription medication, why not get referred out? If you have an injury and a car accident and it's a really big deal and you have fractures, you know, bones are fractured, why not go to the, the orthopedist and get a surgery if necessary? But most of the time, that, that's not necessary with these health concerns. With a thyroid cancer, or a pancreatic cancer, or a tumor, or a chronic, fati you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, all these different chronic diseases like heart disease, you don't need to go to somebody to do an emergency therapy, like at the medical establishment, like at the hospital, like at the emergency room. You need to find somebody who can help you holistically, somebody who can look at the long-term causes of your health concerns. They can look at the big picture of your life and determine what are all the things that have led you to be who you are today with these particular health concerns. So let's go to another part. Maybe we'll go to part three because I'm not, I'm not done telling you who I am, what I do, and why I do what I do. But I don't want to keep, you know, you might have to go somewhere in a minute. and I want to respect that because I have to go somewhere too. So let's just reconvene here, work as a team, and get a little bit more information about who I am what I do and why I do what I do and how applied kinesiology, total mod body modification and neuroemotional technique fit in to this type of thing. Okay.